Riding the Greyhound If I'm in an automobile as a passenger at night, I always think of all those hours I spent traveling on a Greyhound bus while I was in the United States Air Force in the 1950s. I was on those Greyhounds sometimes 36 hours, and several hours of that time was during the day But the most memorable in my mind is traveling at night. Going through Georgia on the way to Florida, you would see the lights of a house off in the distance. It was probably because I was usually homesick on those Greyhound buses, but I would think of the people living in those houses and try to imagine what they were doing. Sometimes you could barely make out the silhouettes of junk cars parked around the house. I know this sounds contrived, but I would get so engrossed in trying to figure out the lay of the land, buildings and stuff, that it would just mesmerize me. If I saw the beacon flashing from an airport, that was a treat, especially if the road went by the perimeter fence. Those buses stopped at every little town on the road with some of the stops timed for eating. Sometimes you could get some pretty good food, but most of the time it wasn't fit to eat. The workers in those joints fascinated me as much as the houses off in the distance at night. I would try and figure out who the people were and what kind of life they were living. What kind of family situation did they live in, especially the younger workers? For some odd reason, it was all sad to me. All of those greyhounds had a smell, but you acclimated to it fast. Then, after a rest stop, you had to reacclimate when you boarded the bus to go to the next whistle stop. I think I was on one that had a bathroom, and that was a treat. Eventually, the bus driver and all the passengers became a family, and sometimes when one departed at a whistle stop destination, it would increase my sadness. If you had conversed with them, it was harder to see them go, and I could tell by the looks on some of the passengers' faces, I was not the only one feeling this way. The feeling among the passengers was probably related to the Stockholm Syndrome. After being cooped up with a bunch of people for a long time, you started to bond.